Hello and welcome to Channel 2S. I'm your host, Second Sandwave, and today we're looking at the high grade Universal Century GM ground type. Now, for those of you that don't know, I am a huge fan of the ground GM. It is probably one of my favorite GMs ever. In fact, I even did an episode of MS Report with the guys way back when where we talked about high grades that we really wanted to see Bondi make. It was basically like a top five list kind of thing. And I believe the ground GM was either my number one or number two pick. And needless to say, I was very, very excited when a few months later they showed this guy off at Gunpla Expo. So naturally, I was going to get my hands on one of these as soon as I could. Now, I think I've talked in the past about how awesome the box art on this kit is, but just in case I haven't said it yet, it looks really good. Like seriously, I love Gunpla box art, and this, this is box art done perfectly. You got a nice big GM right here in the center showing you exactly what you're getting in the box. That looks great. We got another one down here in the corner shooting off his rocket launcher. Looks awesome. We got another one over here with the net launcher. So they're showing you everything you get in the box with night three very cool looking GMs right here. The terrain is just incredibly detailed and looks so freaking awesome. Even the trees back there. Everything here just has so much detail in it. It looks great. Behind this GM over here, we have a big old explosion going off, and it just looks so realistic because there's like clumps of dirt and rocks and stuff being thrown into the air, and it just looks awesome. And then the debris from the explosion kind of blends with the shells that are being ejected from the side of the main guy's machine gun, and that's just a really visually cool looking thing and it's awesome this whole box cover looks like an action movie and I love it and then to cap it all off there's a tiny little goof flight type in the background taunting us with its non-existence and by the way that was another one of those kits that was on my top five list that I made back then still waiting for the high grade there's also another one over here in the other corner kind of crashing and burning basically sucks to be that guy but moving along, the bottom of the box, we have a couple images of the kit itself looking very nice from the front and the back. A little blurb there saying that this is a stylish figure in the latest format. It certainly is. We got some lovely actions here for the GM ground type. They're showing us him with the bazooka in pretty much the same pose he was in the front of the box. We got another guy in a different pose with the gun, another guy in a different pose with the bazooka, a guy in a different pose with the bazooka, some little callouts for all the weapons, and then a little thing that's showing off that this guy's beam sabers are actually going to be stored in his legs, just like in the OVA. That is so cool. And of course, he has a wide range of motions and various gimmicks to allow the reproduction of powerful actions. And then for gimmicks, we have what appears to be super articulation because it looks like the waist can move forward a decent bit and he's got some really crazy wrist movement going on there. So that's going to be awesome to see. Can't wait to tell how they pull that off. The shield looks like it rotates forward really nicely. It's got a little stand, sort of like the uh, sort of like the ground Gundam that this guy's based off of, so we can prop it up. And of course, he has a pretty awesome spread of weaponry. Then on the bottom of the box, we have another not quite as cool picture of all the GM ground types fighting off some unseen foe. And then in case you're not familiar with the GM ground type or you haven't seen 8th MS team, it gives you a quick explanation of exactly what this mobile suit is. And then the side of the box gives us basically no new information. It's the same picture, same name we've seen before. All it tells us is that this is high grade number 202 in the HGUC line. And now it's time for the fun part. So the first bag we have here in the box is including the A runner and the D2 runner. The A runner is molded mostly in a very nice looking tan white color. I like that a lot. We have one single very nice looking teal piece that is going to be used for the eyes. I love how this looks in the lights. So cool. And what's surprising me is that first of all, there's a lot of detail on this for high grade. These panel lines are really sharp looking. It actually looks kind of like a real grade. I like that. Also, the color of orange they used on this is kind of surprising. That's almost got a bit of a peach tone to it. Kind of neat, and honestly, I'm not complaining. It looks pretty awesome. And judging by those grooves on the magazine for the bazooka, it looks like it just might have a detachable ammo clip. Next bag here has absolutely nothing special in it. It's just more white parts and some polycaps and some more gray parts. Who cares? Let's look at the next bag instead, which is more white parts. But now this does actually answer one of my questions because I wasn't sure if this guy was going to have the opening hatches for the beam sabers on both legs and well, looks like he does. Also the detail inside of these pieces is awesome. 
Then on the other side we just got some gray parts and some beam sabers. And then a bunch of different marking seals with all these different numbers on it. We got some big numbers up here for the shield. Those are going to look pretty cool. And then we even get some little numbers as well if you want to put some numbers on the shoulder as well. Just in case this guy loses his shield so we can still show people which team he's a part of. And that's all the bags in the box. But there's one last item in here before we get to the manual. And that is this little set of assembly instructions in several different languages that they've started including in recent kits. Now every kit I've gotten in the last year or so has been through Bluefin, so I don't know if this is specifically a Bluefin thing or if this is something that Bondi's been just generally doing with their kits. If you bought a more recent kit that didn't include one of these directly from Bondi, let me know because I'm kind of curious to see if this is just an American thing. And here we are guys, finally, the manual. It's got a picture of the model all panel lined up, probably painted and also top coated. And we got some nice looking statistics right here that are probably only interesting to a few of you, but hey, they could be kind of useful if you wanted to make like a Gundam RPG or something. Back of the manual has some pictures we've seen before, but they got some little text blurbs to go with them. They talk about the shield and about all the functionality. It looks like it's got a lot of mobility. It stands, talks just a little bit about the beam saber in case you're one of the five people who doesn't know what a beam saber is. And it looks like we're going to have to paint the inside of that saber hatch. Can't say I'm surprised, this isn't a master grade after all. We have the full weapons load out of this kit. Looks like it comes with a bunch of really fun stuff. And then of course there's those markings we saw earlier. And then down here we have the everyday adventures of the GM ground type fighting Xeon, being awesome, getting blown up. You know, all the usual Federation grunt stuff. And then for you customizers and airbrushers out here, here is a color guide for the GM ground type so you know exactly what colors to make, what pieces. And then inside the manual we have another little bit of story information, this time about the history of the GM itself. You can go ahead and pause that if you want to read it. They found something to say about the backpack, which I didn't think they would. I mean, it's just a backpack. How could it be interesting? But they found something to say about it anyways. There's a brief explanation of the 100mm machine gun. A little blurb about the net gun that looks suspiciously a lot longer in Japanese than it is in English. And like with all the other weapons, there's a little thing here telling you what a rocket launcher is in case you just weren't quite sure. Hint. It shoots rockets. And then there's some more specs on the inside of the manual, although these ones haven't been translated probably because they're already right here on the front of the manual in English, so I guess they thought they wouldn't bother wasting the ink. And then the rest of this manual is just build instructions, lots of black and white pictures of little pieces of plastic going together to make a big, awesome looking mobile suit. There you go guys, that's the GM ground type and everything that comes with it. Quite the spread of parts. This is one of the smaller high grade Universal Century kits at 1300 yen, but it still looks like it comes with a bunch of pretty cool stuff and I am really looking forward to building this because like I said, one of my favorite grunts. So as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like right about now. If you're new to Channel 2S, I do all sorts of Gunpla related content from news to reviews to unboxings to builds and anything in between that I can think of. If you're into that sort of thing, you might want to hit that subscribe button right about now. And as always, I'm your host Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time.